We're here with Sydney Gish. Hello. I'm Chris. I'm Eric. And uh, sorry. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's so great to have you here for uh, Rocker Tots 2018. Yeah. Thank you for thank you for having me. Yeah. Of course. I mean, it, it's it's honestly blowing our minds that like we are so so happy with, with all the groups, especially, but like. We play your music on our radio show like oh, almost every single week, so it's like, you know, it's kind of a big deal to like meet you and stuff. So you know, thank you. getting that out of the way. But um, yeah, no, I mean, maybe like I don't know, a year ago or so, um, our friend Will he showed me your music, and I was like, oh, this is yes. this is it. Like, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> the goal is to just play it. Yeah, instead of like, well, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> But you know, it's it's so there's like little moments in your song, and you're just like your songs, and it's it's just like yeah, like that that little you know bells going off or like you know sounds in the background. I appreciate you know the the, the craftsmanship. Thank you. Into it, so. I'm glad you like the little details. Yeah, yeah. It's because I'll write a song and I'll get super bored listening to it again, thinking about the basic stuff that has to be in there anyway, like the guitars and the drums. I'll be like, well, what can I do to make this less like boring so that I don't I wouldn't listen to it and be like. Yeah. <laughs> what can I put in here that like will keep taking my attention over and over again? And like I also think when I listen to music, I'm keeping an ear out for like things that other people do in their songs right. to like make it less boring. Whether it's like they do a tempo change or they do like a weird change or they do like a production kind of like panning trick. Right, like I'll yeah. play it back and be like, what do they do there? And then like try and listen to what they're doing and fake it when yeah. I am bored with my own song that has nothing to do with the song I just listened to. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I think Eric, we had we had some questions prepared, but uh, iPhone oh, 10. I, my face my can't face. my face can't open the the, the phone. Um, oh, it's like it has to scan your face. Yeah. Or no, it's like that commercial that was like pay with your face. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> that commercial yeah. was who wrote that copy and was like, what's the new subject? This is the ad for you. <laughs> like pay with your face. It's like why? Why is that? <laughs> why would you think? Like, what consumers did they test that on? They were like, I don't want to pay with my face. Yeah. Like, yeah, and they tested it, too. That's the thing, like, you know. So yeah, they, they like, went they it. totally had, like, a big room of, like, tech startup dudes, like, sitting in an auditorium, and they, like, put that ad on there, and they all were just, like, cheering. This, this is it. <laughs> like, this is our angle. Yeah. But, yeah, whatever, though. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I wanted to say, um, going along with what Chris said, um, very first song I listened to was Bird Tutorial, and I really, really liked how you just took like the bird sounds and the clips of the guy talking and like made that musical. And I don't know, that was like a very good first impression uh, for me of your music. And I think it continued as I listened through the rest of that album. It's very fun and genuine, and yeah, I think we both really appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. I'm, gl I'm glad you like her tutorial also. Yeah. When I was recording um, that whole album over New Year's Eve, I always like to have a song that's different than the other songs. That's the first song that I ever put an album out. It's kind of like, it's the intro, like, whatever. It goes into, like, a real song. But um, with Bird Tutorial, I was like, oh, this is so fun. Like, um, I love cutting up the bird. And then my mom was, or, like, my parents weren't that into it because they were like, what is that? <laughs> like, why, <laughs> like, why would you ever want that instead of, like, a song? And then, um, but it was... Like, whenever I get, like, good feedback on that, I'm, like, really glad because I really like listening to the avalanches a lot. Oh, yeah. And, um, Jeff, like, putting vocal samples as, like, kind of the vocal lead or whatever is, like, they do a lot. So I was, like, I want to try that. And I had this instrumental that I hated my vocals on, so I got rid of them. And I was, like, what did I put here? And I found this bird guy. <laughs> it's, like, hey. And it, so I, like, chopped him up and, like, arranged him to the beat, which is something I hadn't really done before. Um, bird tutorial because I was yeah. like if I just put them over that it would be like atmospheric birds but I want it to be like it's fun but the old method like yeah, <laughs> yeah. just sitting in my kitchen like making sure he goes on the syllables yeah like, it definitely works I mean thanks. You know, I'm glad it turned out good because yeah. when I was doing that I was just thinking like why am I doing this batshit activity like what's, <laughs> what's the benefit here like I waste more time snapping a bird man to the syllables <laughs> himself like what? but whatever like I'm glad it turned out fun and it also like um it gives me more confidence now, like if I have an idea that's kind of bad shit, if I can imagine it and it's entertaining to me, then I might as well spend an hour yeah. making it not even able to explain what I'm doing to a lot of people. Even though it's like, the, snapping a bird guy to the like bar is like the simplest thing ever. It's not like this extreme concept. It takes, <laughs> it takes a lot of thought, like no, it's just like, if I told somebody like, I'm putting a bird man to the metronome, they would be like, go do your work. Like, yeah. like, like something like that, where it seems like it would be a waste of time, but it ends up making something that's fun. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, and like th- that's you know, of of the songs that you have, I mean, you know, I know you said it's like kind of like an intro, but like I see it as like you know, like that's a song, you know. Yeah. It's like, and then I treated the vocal of the bird guy against the beat like it was just a lead vocal and wrote yeah. a song around it. So I was like thinking I could just do different things. Like it's just a series of like, um, just like. I don't really know what I'm gonna make, but like I just think like what would be the next step that can make this more fun? And I right. just like throw it in there. And if I listen to it, I'm like, this is worse. Just get rid of it. Try <laughs> but um, yeah, kind of just like seeing where it goes and following all the dumb ideas I have instead of like suppressing them to be like, yeah. if this turns out weird, I'm gonna be in trouble or like I'm gonna get a bad grade. It's just kind of like what happens if you put out music that is a piece of shit? Like, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> like it doesn't actually do anything. So it's like fun. Yeah. It's really fun just being able to experiment. Right. Yeah. So how do you kind of, like, I probably get this question a lot, but, like, balancing, like, student life and, you know, like, you know, you're, you're on music blogs and, you know, like, you know, people are, are learning about, you know, Sydney Gish, who you are, and it's like, you know, how does, how does that kind of feel, you know, where, where you're still a student and, like, you know, this, this world is, you know, coming up yeah. to you? It feels, it feels like being asked that question because I'm still fucking around yeah. with my laptop, the same as always, except now... I've accident. Also, I started releasing music under like I didn't start like a solo project. Like I just like started releasing music in a singer songwritery way because that was just what made sense to me when I was like younger. And um, as I've gotten more convoluted and more like oh, I'm a bird guy, like as I've gotten more like into wanting to build an album that's like not just a singer songwritery kind of album and put more stuff on there, I'm thinking like, well, why am I still a singer? Or just like yeah. why am I still as one person instead of like fucking dead mouse with a mask hiding in the corner producing <laughs> stuff and throwing it into the world and then running away. <laughs> but um, so I just kind of am down to like, I'm trying to think of like how I can find a fun balance um, between kind of putting the focus on like the work that I'm doing instead of just like, well, here I am, like, yeah. here's me, like, cause that's not it at all. Right. It's really just the fun of experimenting. And so that's how, it, and I didn't think that all the, that this year would happen at all. Like. Um, I couldn't have anticipated the response this year, which is also why I've been thinking more about that. But um, re- and also with student life, like I dropped a class this semester, I, like <laughs> just trying my best yeah, um, yeah. to get my degree. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a bit of a struggle, a lot of stuff to think about. But um, I definitely feel like, even though I, I just feel like I have a different set of like things to think about now than I did before. Like in my freshman year, I would be just like in class, like doodling constantly, like just freaking out. And I would, I still am going to get this flood of stupid ideas constantly. So <laughs> I want to put them to good use and make something yeah. with them that can be beneficial to like literally anyone, as instead of just me looking at them, be like, that was a fun idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, even though it's like a lot to think about right now, I feel like I have an outlet for that kind of thing. So it's it's working out. Yeah. Hopefully, in a few more years, I'll have the outlet kind of nailed down to a more specific extent. It'll make more sense. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, the you know, iPhones face again, really. You need my face. iPhones, just you gotta face your face. Yeah, face with your finger. Uh, yeah. I was first imagining like it would do like your face print instead of your thumb. <laughs> Just like, oh, you unlock my phone. Yeah. <laughs> like me unlocking my iPad, just like, smacking on typing. Yeah, and then I guess, you know, going off of like, you know, school and whatnot, you know, people like at your school, how, how is that kind of reaction and stuff? Like, do people come up to you and like, oh my god, like, you're here. Um, yeah, and sometimes, but not. it's not really like um, a huge thing. Like, I'm just really, I'm just appreciative. I'm like really glad that people enjoy the work that I did on, on my own, really, just yeah. to like figure out what would be fun to do. And they ended up liking it. I'm like, cool, yeah, like, thanks. <laughs> like, yeah. thanks for checking it out. And um, yeah, usually it's like younger people um, who, because I, but like people my age will come up to me and be like, hey, like, how's it going? It's been yeah. a while, it's been a while. Like, because I was in New York for a long time too, and also I haven't really been as um, active in like school clubs as I was before. And so um, with my older with my older friends, I'm like, oh my god, like we we just like pick up where we left off with younger people. Yeah. They're like, oh, so like this is what you do. I'm just like, this only really started happening like this year with all the with like the touring like more often than yeah. not or not touring, but just like um, c- traveling on the weekends and like, music blogs and thinking about like strategies for stuff instead of just yeah. thinking about the bird that I'm arranging. <laughs> thinking yeah, about yeah. the strategy of what's gonna happen. Um, it's really just something that started happening this year. And I'm, I'm really glad it turned out that way. Like, this would have seemed like a weird, batshit daydream last year, like, yeah. to have this kind of scale to play around with. But I'm glad that I do it. I'm excited to just keep kind of um, framing ideas in a different way that I think would be fun. Yes, Based yes. off, like, it's batshit yeah. that you're here. Because, like, 
I've been playing shows for way longer of a time than like um, just showing up. People be like, "Are you like playing today?" I'm like, "Yeah." They go, like they play in the corner. You're like, "Oh, it's good." Like, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've been playing shows like that for way longer. That it's like, well, I guess you're here now. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you. I'm I'm honored that you enjoy the music. Yeah. I'm really just glad that you like it. And, yeah. Um, no, really. There's yeah. there's so many people at this station that it, it's just like when we announced, you know, the lineup, everybody was like, like so, so so yeah, like you know, I I told you know everybody's kind of like. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, like, no, but, you know, let her do her thing, but, you know, like, <laughs> but I'm everybody. Not a it's like, I'm, I'm definitely focused on, like, I just, just got to play, like, a live show, but it's less, like, business, more just yeah. like, well, I'm going to go play another show. Like, yeah. And I, I literally, I just get got here from the commuter rail, like, I'm not on tour or anything, yeah. so I'm just, like, hanging out, like. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, let me tell you, like, our, our DJs were so excited. They're like, this is so oh. cool. So, like. <laughs> they picked up yeah. me and my friend Claire. <laughs> yeah, they're just playing at Coffee and Cotton. Yeah, they're right? playing at um, Coffee and Cotton tonight, and their ride bailed on them today. Oh, so, they texted me, like, hey, how are you getting to Lowell? I'm like, I'm taking the commuter rail, so we decided to, like, go over here together. Yeah. And it was just, it was very nice to yeah. get a ride also. Because yeah. we played a show together at Coffee and Cotton last year. Oh, really? And uh, we tried to take the, also take the commuter rail that time, but um, it was like shut down, so we had to take like a series of buses. Yeah. Where like, you know, when like well, they shut down a train and they like guard, they like guide All too familiar people. with the MBTA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those like bus replacing a train situations. Yeah. <laughs> um, to get to Lowell last time we went here, so uh, no, yeah, it was, it was really yeah. nice. And uh, yeah, no, I'm glad I could get here. I'm glad yeah. I could physically travel. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so glad that I could physically travel. Like, what is that? Anyway, yeah, I yeah. got here for the show. Anyway. But, yeah, I don't, yeah. Um, so, going along with what you were talking about, uh, your reception that you've had recently, I I saw on your Instagram story, you were one of those people who posted the Spotify rap. The Spotify so, rap. Like, that was, yeah, that was a fun So, yeah. how was it, like, getting to see that? Like, getting to see how many people you reached through that platform? It's it's really crazy. I'm really glad that the Spotify rap happened yesterday, because I did Spotify rap last year, too, and I, it was just, like, um, like a few thousand, but, like, nothing crazy that, uh, at least not crazy to me, I was just like, wow, people are listening to my music who I don't know. Like, that was really yeah. the thing. Beyond my friends were listening to it at the end of this year, because at the start of the year, all my friends were listening to it. And then it was like, strangers were listening, that's so cool. And then earlier this year, I got, um, right after I put No Dogs a Lot Out, I got New Music Friday on the US and the UK. And that, like, if you look at my, I was on my Spotify for artists looking at my chart or whatever, and like, it literally just looks like nothing, nothing, nothing. New Music Friday was like, all the way up oh here. Oh my god. And then it went down, and here's where I'm at now. <laughs> it was like, of, on a scale that is so mind-boggling that it never happened again. It was, it was just like, wow. to have that hit me out of nowhere and then suddenly get emails from everyone who's like, every time an indie artist goes on to Music Friday, we email them automatically yeah. or something like that. Or it's not like a rule they have, but it's basically what they do. I was just like, fielding like, in this weird game all year, like, <laughs> trying to figure out like, what the fuck is going on. Like, I don't know who any of you are, I just moved. Yeah, it I don't happened know who just like any that. of you are. Yeah, like, I moved cities, I put out a new album, and suddenly all these strangers are emailing me. And I'm like, okay, some of them I'm going to want to work with. I don't know who some of the other ones are. And some of them are just emailing me because they're, like, indie artist on New Music Friday. Like, yeah. equals, like, A&R strategy. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, um, I just, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, l I don't know anything about the music industry also, and I still don't. <laughs> it was like, I just had a shit ton of coffee meetings, and I was just like, hey, like, what's up? Just, like, sitting with, like, in a pret a like, yep, I know what's going on, but I didn't know what's yeah. going on. And, um, so basically, yeah, the whole year it's felt like a weird, like, day by day, like, what do I have to do today? Like, what's even going on? But to look back at it via the Spotify or apps, and to be like, oh shit, that's what happened this year. Yeah. <laughs> when I was, like, feeling these weird things of just, I keep, like, miming, punching people, because so I imagine yeah. just, like, running through, like, through running down the sidewalk, and somebody's like, hey, I heard you, he's going, what you want? Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, it's felt just like a series of flight or fight or flight responses yeah. until I looked back at the square that was like, you had four million streams. I'm like, that yeah, four million streams. Yeah, yeah. So that's like mind-boggling. It's yeah. crazy. I was like, what? This is actually so tight. Like, it was tight before, but in a way where I was so confused all the time. To look back and be like, wow, <laughs> this shit actually is real. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And so I just feel really good about it. And um, it's really also good to know that I just did that by following stupid ideas I had. Yeah. And I didn't have to, like, get outside, like, input or anything. 
like even though it's still super lo-fi and there's like a lot of areas I could improve on to like know that I just did that with the stupid ideas I had that I would have just like not wanted to share if I had taken it gone out of the land or whatever. Like um, it's it feels really good. It gives me more confidence to like follow whatever creative things I think of and just write them off. It's like that's just you being a dumbass, like go do your real work. <laughs> like maybe this could be my real work if I clean up this dumb idea to the extent where it's entertaining to people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And like, I, I was gonna say, like, I, I read Stereo Gum pretty regularly, and you know, I think they, I don't know how long ago it was, but I think you were on like New Artists to Watch or something like that, and I was like, oh, this is kind of a cool combination of two things. They're like a lot like, you know. So I, I don't know. It, it, I, I, I can see how just like, you know, these places like talking about it all of a sudden, it's just, like a lot of ones, but it's like really amazing. So. Thank you. And it, it just feels really good because like, I didn't expect her, her response on this level, and so now I'm kind of thinking, like, well, now that I have kind of this level, like, what should I do now? Yeah. Because yeah, it's, it's not going to be this. I'm not just going to try and do the same thing I did last year. I have to approach it differently now because it's a fundamentally different situation. And that's what I felt after I advised houses and before New York's level. I was thinking, like, well, now that I have strangers, <laughs> like, I just thought, like, strangers, not like fans or. I was just like, these are strangers who are listening to my music. What could I show to a stranger? I want it to sound cleaner, and so I thought that that was loud, because like, kind of like cleaning up production and having different ideas in there. And so I kind of just wanted to clean it up again and see what I could do, um, yeah. thinking about the, uh, for the ways that I could go now. And it's probably going to sound like the same as my other albums. Everything I do sounds the same like anyway, but like, <laughs> it has like the same kind of thing. But uh, yeah, like I definitely, it's a different situation now that I want to respond to it. It's a different way. Yeah. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Hopefully, I keep saying that. Now it's like really just a time crunch. Like, well, it's not another New Year's album, but hopefully some time crunch. Yeah. So um, I I hope that you get another another really cool album art because I really appreciate this kind of like juxtaposition of different things that oh, you yeah. on your album. Who, so Thank who you. designs that? Who I did the album art. Really? Oh, wow, yeah, yeah I did. Great. I did the whole thing on my computer mostly by myself. Like I I love having control over, over everything. All of it, yeah. Uh, so I was playing around with stock images, and originally the idea for No Dogs Allowed, also this is just from like um, writing in my notes app whenever I have any idea at all, <laughs> and like going back and reading them being like, oh that's still entertaining like five hours later, and I run with it. I was thinking like, um, No Dogs Allowed would be a cool name for an album, but I didn't know what the cover would look like. I just thought like, No Dogs Allowed. <laughs> like, <laughs> just, like, I was at work at like my first co-op, and I'm just like doing a spreadsheet, and I'm like listening to some like shit on Discover Weekly. <laughs> And I was like, well, how can I illustrate that on the cover? It's like, I thought of like this fun thing that didn't come through at all, in which like it would be like a guy walking some fucked up like human dog, and like there would be, but it would be like cartoonish and not actually creepy. Yeah. And yeah. like, but it would be creepy in concept, but the execution would not be yeah. like disgusting to look at, like a fucked up human dog cartoon. <laughs> and he's like there, and then there's like a sign that says no dogs allowed, and he's like, no dogs allowed, but I have this fucked up dog, I should be allowed. Like it was gonna be like a little cartoon like that. Yeah. And so I tried to make it using a series of stock images, and it came out not looking like that <laughs> whatsoever. But I was looking at it anyway, and I'm like, well, these two guys, I don't know what the fuck's going on here, but it looks kind of like uh, hieroglyphics and shit, and also yeah. they look kind of cool, so. I was like, what if they were walking around a paint project? Let's change angles. And so I did that instead. And um, it wasn't, I was just kind of like following whatever I thought of in each step. So that was really fun though. I liked the yeah. way that the whole art turned out. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. And then so the first the first album too you did mm -hmm. also, yeah, and it's like quite different from the second album. Um, so you're talking about the Oprah Masterclass. Um, essentially, students had pre written questions and, you know, some of them were picked. So they got to ask Oprah a question like directly, and you know, some of them were like, I'm trying to remember exactly what they were, but it was all like spiritual life guiding things and stuff like that. A master class on spirituality with Oprah. Yeah, essentially, it was just kind of like, how do you like make yourself like a better person, something like, something like that. And she was like, I wake up every day and I'm grateful for everything around me. It was, you know, hearing Oprah talk is inspirational, but she's like. So just like everything around you is worth living and like everything is amazing. And it was just like, wow, my perspective on life has changed a little bit. That's like, awesome. I don't know if I'm going to write, you know, what I'm grateful for every day, but that is pretty neat. Um, so yeah, it was kind of cool to have her. But That's anyway. Awesome. <laughs> I wasn't there, but I heard good things. Uh, mostly for me. Because I still didn't want to. 
Yeah, we got cool t-shirts too, you know, like being in college you just get a bunch of like random ass t-shirts for everything, so. It just says Oprah, you mass lol in like big letters. <laughs> just no doubt what went down at UMass yeah. just Oprah. Yeah. Well, but, that's great. Um, anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure when it was. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't personally go. Matt Landry would be the person to ask, but you did open for Miss Mitski, right? I did open. Yeah. For How so was that? What was that? That was like? awesome. Yeah. It was so cool. It was like, um, it was amazing because I've been listening to Mitski like for since before I put out my first album, and I'm just like Mitski's a cool musician. Like in my head, I'm like Mitski's fucking Mitski. Like, <laughs> not like oh, it was on tour with Mitski. Just Mitski's Mitski. Yeah. And it's like um. Yeah, that was like the weirdest, like, Mitski is Mitski, but yeah, it was like, she seemed like, um, like, I've been listening to her for so long, I was just like, man, she's so cool, and um, when I was, when I started working with my agency in the spring, I was just telling them, like, listen, like, I don't know how to go on tour, but I'm trying to go on tour this summer with just any, like, any, I'm just trying to be tour, on tour this summer, and um, when the offer came through for week one, they because we set, it set up Pedal and Camp Cook for two and a half weeks, this is perfect, these bands are so cool, so nice, and like, I'm ready to go on tour with them, and then when Mitski came through for like five or six days, I was like, oh shit, this is perfect because I had a free month anyway. Yeah. I was just gonna be like sitting like a chair, like in a chair, just <laughs> sitting like a chair, <laughs> in a chair. Um, and like, um, I was just gonna be like, oh, I'm not even doing anything. And I was like, oh shit, I get to go on tour with Mitski for five days instead. Like that was just, it was just cool. Yeah. Know, it was just very cool. I'm so glad I got to do that. Like, it felt awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know if you have any other things. Yes, my, my last question is, um, what is your favorite sound effect that you put into any of your songs? All right, so, um, my favorite sound effect is probably, or at the very end of Bird Tutorial, there's like, um, the whole song is like, he's teaching this bird to talk, right? Of course. Like, of course, I sound like the most pretentious <laughs> ass ever. <laughs> Like, well, in the whole song, he's really just teaching the bird. <laughs> like, of course he is. So, like, at the very end of the song, though, like, um, and to the parakeet recording, like, the raw sample from itself, there's, like, um, once this guy is done explaining what's about to happen in a serious way, which is, like, like, there's, like, this girl who comes over, and she's, like, well, I'm gonna, she's, like, the voice that teaches the parakeet to talk, and she's, like, hello, baby. Like, yeah. and she's at the very end of bird tutorial. And so when she starts telling, giving the actual instructions to the parakeet, at the very end of the song, there's also the parakeet itself, that I put really low, um, that sometimes people don't listen. I, you probably might have heard it, but it's like, um, it's just basically like a guy coughing first, and then it goes into an opera note that's in the key of her So it's like, <coughs> like, right at the end, I put that in like one ear, because I was like, he learned to talk. I have to um, listen for that. It's that. at the very end, if you turn it up, it's like, hello, baby, and it's like, oh, <coughs> like, <laughs> it is the parakeet learning how to talk, and he sounds beautiful. It's supposed yeah. to be an opera singer. But I had it for going on for longer at the end of the song. I'm like, this is too bad shit. So I cut it off. Just kept it in there for myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's like really just, um, I, f I find that like producing songs is like a fun outlet to just kind of follow my boredom to wherever it takes me. <laughs> and it doesn't bother anyone because it's just a song at the end. And um, it's really fun. I like yeah. being able to do that. We'll have to listen for that. I didn't know that. Yeah. He's right at the end. Yeah. Yep. But, yeah, Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, of course. And yeah, yeah. we look forward to the to the show.